Well, it appears that Eric Debay still won't shut up. He's still pushing flat crap, wild ass theories without evidence, claims without substance. Let's have a look and see what he's got today. Okay, Eric, roll VT. There is a popular myth taught to school children, which most adults today still believe, that people in history have traveled in perfectly straight lines eastwards or westwards, and eventually arrived back at their starting point. No, but it's often explained that if you travelled in a perfectly straight line, then you would arrive back at your destination. That's something a little different, Eric. It is heralded as proof of the globe Earth, and claimed that hundreds of adventurers since Magellan have completed such successful circumnavigations. Well, hundreds have circumnavigated the Earth. Just not in an exact straight line. But the truth is that no one in history has ever set off travelling in a perfectly straight line and returned back at their starting point. Well, I'll tell you who is travelling in a perfectly straight line and going all the way round the Earth. The astronauts aboard the ISS. All successful circumnavigations in history, whether by sea or air, have instead followed the same pattern, which is sailing or flying, the most convenient route from port to port, stopping for supplies and refueling until a complete circle has been made. Well, as for sailors, they do have the land that gets in the way. And for aircraft, yes, they need to refuel. And it's no good just stopping in the middle of the Pacific if there's no land there. They have to land where there's an airport. Not a single sailor or aviator in history has or could travel only in the same one perfectly straight direction and magically arrive back where they began. Well, showing a circumnavigation on a flat earth <clears throat> map will show it as roughly a circle. You display that on a globe and it will look fairly straight. This ridiculous lie becomes obvious when critically examined but when taught to young children, successfully bends and warps their minds into accepting globe indoctrination. No, what children are taught is supported by evidence. Indoctrination is what you're pushing. Unsupported, wild-ass theories. Unlike the cardinal directions on a compass rose, north, south, east and west on earth are not simply straight lines separated by 90 degrees. Oh, but they are. North, rather than being an upward shooting arrow, is actually a point, a center point, the center point of the entire Earth, known as the geographic North Pole. No, North isn't up and South isn't down. There is no top and bottom to the Earth, you know. Situated directly below Polaris, the North Pole Star, the only motionless star in the heavens, which marks the exact northern center point of the sky. Fail again, me old China. Polaris is about one degree off the stellar point of rotation. If you do some time-lapse filming of the rotation of the northern sky, you'll see that Polaris will draw a very little circle. South, rather than being a downward shooting arrow, is actually every line tangent to the northern center point, or in other words, every straight line extending outwards from the North Pole heads due south. Yes, Eric, but if you start at the North Pole, and pick any one of those directions heading due south, eventually those lines will start to converge again and meet at the South Pole. East and west, rather than being right and left facing arrows, are actually clockwise and counterclockwise circles around the pole. The sun, moon and stars all rise in the east and set in the west, making perfect circles over and around us every day. I think you may have brushed over something there, Eric. As you can observe, they travel in a circular westward path over and around the Earth, and do not all travel in a straight leftward direction, as suggested by a compass rose. Yep, what you've forgotten is if you're looking south of the equator, the stars start to move in circles, getting smaller and smaller, until they reach the southern stellar point of rotation, something that flat earthers have never, ever been able to explain. Likewise, navigators since ancient times have used Polaris to guide their ships, knowing that Polaris was the heavenly North Pole, South was traveling keeping your back to Polaris. 
East meant traveling keeping your left shoulder 90 degrees to the pole star, and West meant traveling keeping your right shoulder 90 degrees to the pole star. Well, you've got a bit of a problem, haven't you, Eric? As soon as you cross that equator, you ain't going to see the Northern Pole Star. And why is that? I don't know. It's just something else that Flat Earth fails to explain. All circumnavigations in history have been eastwards or westwards, and never northwards or southwards, because the latter is geographically impossible. Only it isn't, Eric. It's been done many times. The fastest time was July 9th to 11th, 2019, in a project called One More Orbit. The flight headed north until it crossed the North Pole, at which point it was then headed southwards, and it stopped in Kazakhstan for refuelling. 30 minute stop maximum. It then carried on south further and refuelled again in Mauritius. Continuing south, it flew over the South Pole. At that point, it's then flying north, with a further stop in Punta Arenas in Chile, and carrying on north again until it reached Kennedy Space Center. The total flight time was 46 hours, 40 minutes, and 22 seconds. The fastest polar circumnavigation of the Earth. Likewise, Southern Hemisphere flights from Australia to South America, or New Zealand to South Africa, for example, never fly the shortest, most direct route on a globe, which would be southwards over Antarctica. It is claimed this is because such flights would allegedly be too cold for any airplanes to handle. No, Eric, it's got nothing to do with how cold it is up there. On typical flights at 30, 40,000 feet, the temperature is minus 70 Fahrenheit, about minus 57 centigrade. That is not an issue. The issue is how far the planes would be from an emergency diversionary airport. You don't want an emergency landing in the middle of Antarctica because no one is going to help you. But the reality is the routes are geographically impossible because Antarctica is not a tiny ice continent confined to the underside of a spherical spinning ball earth. Oh, I don't know, Eric. I think that five and a half million square miles is not what I would call tiny, really. Antarctica is actually the outer southern perimeter of our level motionless plain Earth and surrounds the other six continents. Is it? How do you know this, Eric, bearing in mind what you are about to say? How far southwards Antarctica actually extends and how it terminates or what exists beyond it are all unknown to and kept from the general public, however. So it's all unknown. It's all kept from the general public. So how can you say that there's a wall that goes around the entire perimeter of the Earth? And as a result, no completely accurate, fully functioning flat Earth map exists or could exist without the people being first allowed full, independent exploration of the Arctic, Antarctic, and everywhere else. Eric, you don't need to go as far as Antarctica in order to produce an accurate flat Earth map. As long as you can reach the southernmost point of Chile, as long as you can cover Australia, you should be good to go. Only we know that a flat earth map doesn't work. There are, however, several maps which work as good visual aids for approximating the geography of our flat stationary earth. Ah, this is obviously some new definition of the word approximate that I've not been previously aware of, Eric. It's like my body physique is approximately that of Arnold Schwarzenegger's. Not a bloody tall. The Gleason's 1892 New Standard Map of the World and Hammond's 1945 Air Age Map of the World are two such maps. These so-called azimuthal equidistant maps are used in practical navigation. No, they are not. They are never used in navigation unless you particularly want to get lost. Ooh, Air Map of the World, 1945. It's a flat earth map. Well, let's have a closer look at one or two of those boxes in the corners. This map is made on the North Polar Azimuthal Equidistant Projection. Since it is impossible to spread the surface of a globe on a flat surface without distortion, all maps are distorted in some respects. In this map, the distortion occurs in the east and west directions. This distortion increases gradually from the North Pole to the equator 
and then quite rapidly to the outer limits. The distortion of the Antarctic land areas would be so great that these are not shown. And in the bottom right corner of the map is this little graph, which shows the further south you go, the greater the distortion. And the reason it's distorted is that the map does not match the physicality of a globe Earth. you just been caught lying. You claimed that's a flat Earth map that's used for navigation, when the actual map itself specifically tells you that it's distorted. And what's this you're saying about it with regard to um, United Nations? It can be found in the logos of the United Nations, World Health Organization, International Maritime Organization, and International Civil Aviation Organization. They purport these to be simply two-dimensional representations of a spherical Earth. That's exactly what it is. It's just a representation, a logo, a simple image indicating worldwide. And the globe, specifically the so-called continent of Antarctica, was made by spherizing our flat Earth and bundling the expansive outer perimeter into a cramped, oddly shaped ice continent under the ball. Just think about this claim about Antarctica going all the way round a flat Earth. If it does, it has to be land all the way round in a circle. Do you know why? Because ice floats and the oceans would run underneath an ice wall. Kept off limits by treaty from the general public. I'm going to stop you there because that's just a damn lie. I have read the Antarctic Treaty. It's not very long and it's not difficult to understand. And I recommend anyone who has any concerns about it has a read themselves. Eric, you are a disingenuous, lying, cherry-picking Poe. Because they don't want us to know that Earth is flat. <laughs> Until next time, stay sensible. Shut up and sit down.